So today's video is going to be on the manufacture of aluminium. Aluminium comes from a ore and we call that ore bauxite. Remember that an ore is just a rock that contains a large amount of the metal that we're after. You don't need to know this, um, this huge chemical process, but at this point what we find is that bauxite gets purified to form alumina, which is just aluminium oxide. Luckily you don't need to know this, like I said. However, it's the aluminium oxide that is going to go undergo purification in order to form aluminium. Now, if you've seen my video on the blast furnace, that's the manufacture of iron, you'll know that carbon is used to remove the oxygen from the iron. However, annoyingly, we can't use carbon in this case. Why? Because if you look at the reactivity series, you see that aluminium is more reactive than carbon. So there's no way if you try and react the two together that carbon will be able to displace the oxygen from the aluminium because it just won't happen. So annoyingly, we have to use electrolysis. Watch my video on electrolysis if you're not too sure on this topic, but it just means breaking apart something using electricity. So you have your Al3 plus floating around in what's called the electrolysis cell together with the O2 minus ions and you obviously have your electrodes because that's where the various elements will attach to. So let's take our positive electrode first of all. Remember that the positive electrode is the anode and what you're going to find here is that oxygen is going to discharge because the oxygen ions are negatively charged so obviously they'll go to the positive electrode and oxygen gas will be formed and that's in the electrodes which hang down into the electrolysis cell. However, the oxygen reacts with the anodes and they're made from carbon and what actually forms is carbon dioxide and what that does is it burns away the anodes so this is a very expensive thing that needs to be replaced every month or so because actually the carbon dioxide just causes the anode to disappear and disintegrate so that's not good. Then we're going to look at the aluminium. Now what happens here is the aluminium is attracted to the cathode and the cathode is the electrode which lines the bottom of the electrolysis cell and we find that aluminium combines with three electrons to form aluminium which can be tapped off at the bottom. Again check out my electrolysis videos if you want to know more about ionic equations. The next point I need to talk about is the fact that this process is extremely expensive and that's first of all because I already mentioned those carbon anodes need replacing regularly because carbon dioxide burns them away and second of all it's the high cost of the electricity input needed here because although you find that the aluminium oxide is dissolved in creolite, which is another aluminium containing compound, which lowers the whole operating temperature, you're still looking at temperatures at well over 1000 degrees that need generating, and obviously that needs electricity to generate those super high temperatures. So if you're asked what is the expensive part of this process, talk about the replacement of the anodes, and also the high cost of the electricity. Really quick video, I hope you found it helpful. As always, leave comments, like my video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.